Hello and welcome back to the Brocade Campus Feature Explainer Series. I'm Terry Henry. This time around we're going to have a quick look at BGP and in particular eBGP in this case. So uh, from, a, from AS to AS or two different AS numbers. So uh, what we have is we have two routers. Uh, so these happen to be 6610s, but uh, all um, Brocade routers are configured the same way, whether it's a 7250 or a, you know a, um, an MLXE 32 slot, they're all the same. Um, so router one here is going to be an AS100 for our example. Router two is AS200, so we know it's an eBGP connection because they're two different ASs. If they were the same AS number, then it would be an iBGP or an internal BGP connection um, within the same AS. But anyway, so. Um, we are 10.0.0.1 slash 24, 10.0.0.2 slash 24 uh, for our interconnection between the two. Uh, and then we're using a loopback of uh, slash 32s, 1.1.1.1 slash 32. So they're host addresses on both sides. And the only reason I need loopbacks for eBGP here is just so that I have a network to advertise. So um, it's not being utilized as part of the BGP configuration, just as our advertised network out to the remote side. So let's have a look at how that gets done. So I have my two consoles here. Um, so let's have a look at what is interconnecting those. So I have uh, Foundry Discovery Protocol turned on. So we'll have a look at what our neighbor connection is. So I, have, I can see router 2 out 1 slash 3 slash 1 uh, is my local interface to his 1 slash 3 slash 1 and uh, my 1 slash 3 slash 2 to his 1 slash 3 slash 2. So um, we'll just pick one of those and put, the, put it on there. Um, so we'll go into config T. We'll go to interface E 1 slash 3 slash 1 and we'll put the IP address directly on the interface. We could put it on a VE of course. Um, so we're going to be 10.0.0.1 24. Okay. Now we'll configure my other side. Interface E1 slash, uh, it was the same port, 1 slash 3 slash 1. IP address 10.0.0.2 24. Okay. So I should be able to ping 10.0.0.1 which I can. Okay, so that is successful. So we know we're good here. Um, so the next thing we want to do is we are going to turn on router BGP. Uh, and so the first thing router BGP tells you when you enable it is it's going to tell you to configure the local AS number. So we are local AS 100 in this case. All right. And then we need to tell it who our neighbor is. So uh, neighbor is going to be um, 10.0.0.2 and we need to tell it also what AS that neighbor is in. Um, there's many, many things you can configure for neighbor, but um, in this case, we are just going to um, tell it remote AS 200. Okay, so as soon as I do that, it's going to try to establish a neighbor relationship, but show IP BGP neighbor will show me that um, my total number of neighbors is one, but at, at right now I do not, I'm in, I'm in an active state. So uh, if this was a fully working neighbor relationship, I would be established here, but right now I'm active. So I do not have a working neighbor relationship. And we know that because we haven't configured the other side yet. Um, now, if you have many, many parameters to configure, uh, one, what you might want to do is shut that neighbor down right now uh, then configure, finish the configuration for the neighbor, and then when you're done, bring the neighbor back up. So you would just do a neighbor with its IP address and the shutdown command in order to shut it down while you configure it, because what you don't want is a half-configured neighbor coming up and, you know, without filtered routes or, um, you know, maybe being a transit and passing your service provider through you. Um, so you may want to shut it down while you're configuring. But anyway... Um, so then we we'll go over to router two, go to config T, do a router BGP. Um, local AS on this side was 200. Uh, we will establish our neighbor. Uh, so it is 10.0.0.1 uh, with remote AS, oops, not remove, remote AS 100. Okay, uh, so 
show IP BGP neighbor now shows me that I have a neighbor. It's 10.0.0.1. He's in AS100, which is eBGP. Here's his router ID. This is not the best case scenario. You want to set that router ID normally, especially with BGP, because if the router ID changes, it's going to drop that session and rebuild it. But anyway, for right now, this is fine. And here's our established state. So established is as good as it gets in BGP. That means we have a fully working neighbor relationship. It doesn't mean that the route tables are synchronized. It means the neighbor relationship is established and, and synchronized, right? Um, and then if we look down here at TCP connection state, we see this is established. This does not mean we have a working BGP neighbor relationship. It means we have a working TCP connection status. So in BGP, it's not a real routing protocol. It's a TCP session that ru um, that runs a routing protocol across it, or, or runs a routing session across it, I should say. Um, so the first thing that happens in BGP is it brings up a TCP session between the two peers, then it builds the neighbor relationship across that TCP session. So BGP by itself does not have the ability to come up and discover neighbors and, and start routing between them. You, uh, it needs to build that TCP session, and that TCP session stays up with keep lives uh, forever and ever and ever. And if that TCP session ever gets torn down, the BGP neighbor relationship has to get torn down and start over from scratch. So you don't want that to happen, and thus there's keep lives that go um, forever. Okay, so we have a working neighbor relationship. Um, but what we're going to show IP route here is not going to show me any BGP routes, right? Um, and so I'm going to create my loopbacks and then, um, and then I'll show you how to, um, get those routes into BGP. So <clears throat> I'm going to do an interface loopback one, uh, IP address, um, what did I say that was 1.1.1.1 slash 32. Um, and on the remote side, we're going to do an interface loopback one, uh, IP address 2.2.2.2 slash 32. Okay. So the only way in BGP to advertise a route is to use a network statement under BGP. So, and in order for that to be put in there, it has to be legitimate, uh, legitimate, uh, route in the, in the routing table. So show IP route shows me that I have a 1.1.1 slash 32 route in my routing table. So now I'm going to go to router B router BGP and do a network statement. So network. 1.1.1.1. Okay, and then the mask for it. So actually, I'm gonna. I'll just type it out to do a slash 32, and then I can do other things. I can apply route maps and things like that. But but that's really all I need to do for the basics. And then the same thing on the other side. Right back to router BGP, and then do a network uh, 2.2.2.2 slash 32. Okay, so once I do that. Now, if I do a show IP route, I now see my 1.1.1.1 slash 32 being advertised from, uh, or with a gateway of 10.0.0.1, um, and it is, it is external BGP. So uh, it's been there for 18 seconds. So um, uh, without a, net, a neighbor statement, there is no way to get BGP to advertise a route. And that's a good thing. The last thing you want on the internet is everybody advertising routes that they don't own, right? You have to have a, you have to have it in your routing table as a legitimate route, and you have to have a network statement to make it work. Okay, so that's the very basics. Uh, we could spend a week on BGP alone, but that's the very basics of setting up an eBGP connection. Hope you enjoyed. And thanks. For